Operant conditioning was a theory developed by B.F. Skinner. And contrary to Pavlov, he didn't focus on involuntary behaviors, he focused on voluntary behaviors and how a new behavior is acquired. And he basically looked at what happens before a behavior and what happens after a behavior. Um, the before he called the antecedent, and after the behavior he called the consequence. So what he altered was what happened before someone behaved in order to see if he could influence the behavior. And some of the elements of an antecedent could be cues, which are a stimulus given just before a behavior is supposed to occur. For example, maybe you play music before journal writing to get students ready for that process. Its purpose is to set up a desired behavior. Prompts are another type of antecedent, and that's where you might remind um, someone that a cue is about to happen. Consequences occur after the behavior and can influence future behaviors. He focused on reinforcements, which can strengthen behavior, and he broke that down into positive reinforcements, as well as, well, as an example, uh, getting a new outfit um, and a compliment about that new outfit. And negative reinforcements where a stimuli is actually removed. So in this case, the example might be you get sick, therefore you miss a test. So the stimulus is removed and there is some consequence that occurs. Another type of consequence could be a punishment that actually suppresses behavior. In this case, you get a detention for acting out. Skinner's theory, known as operant conditioning, showed that you could learn a voluntary behavior by strengthening or weakening either the antecedent or the consequence. Coming out of a whole different realm of uh, research, out of cognitive psychology instead of behavioral psychology, were two theorists, um, Piaget being one and Lev Vygotsky being the other. Both developed their theories in the time frame of the 60s and 70s, um, although Vygotsky's theory really was developed sooner than that, it just never made it to the United States until fairly recently because much of the work that he had done um, was held hostage in Russia uh, because he, uh, they felt that he used too much uh, Western psychology um, in his writings and they didn't approve of that at the time. Piaget believed that we have two basic tendencies when we're thinking. One is organization and the other is adaptation. During the organization phase, we're trying to develop schemes around what it is we're experiencing, and that's our way of organizing our thoughts. And during the adaptation phase, as we learn new things, we're trying to accommodate them or assimilate them into our current schemes. His focus is that we're always seeking equilibration, which is a balance between um, what we're experiencing and what our initial schemes happen to be. Piaget is probably most well known for his stages of cognitive development, which include the sensory motor stage, pre-operational, concrete operational, and formal operational. Also a cognitive um, psychologist, Vygotsky, developed a theory his theory was called the social-cultural theory, and he felt that learning uh, involved, for the most part, social interaction. And in this case, he is talking about um, an individual who is learning because they're interacting with others, and that that's the way learning truly occurs, is you have an experience that's co-constructed, and then you internalize that, and it becomes part of your thought process. He was 
uh, very keen on cultural and psychological tools used to develop thinking skills, um, such as rulers and abacuses and computers, tools of a culture, as well as psychological tools which referred to signs and symbol systems used by cultures. The most important symbol system he focused on was language. And lastly, his theory talks about the zone of proximal development, which is um, the, the level at which you're working with a child that's just above their current level of, of understanding. That we don't do things so far above their current level of understanding that we frustrate them or below, but we reach right ab one level above where they currently are. Um, and that we learn at that level through um, either an adult or a more capable peer. So all of these theories um, have applications to the classroom even today. And part of what you're going to be doing this week is seeing what those applications are. And you'll get a good sense of that by reading the text. So what we're going to focus on is not just the theory itself, but its application to the classroom and how we currently use parts and pieces of these theories in things that we do every day.